Python on Hardware, we bring you the latest news from the growing trend. The it's most pink snakes. Python on electronics. Okay. So, uh, what happened this week? Well, this week, we looked at art. Oh, le art. Art and the combination of art and electronics. And I could think of no better example than this right now. And uh, luckily, Brian just came on our show. So this is from uh, Bay Area artist Vanessa Di Tulio, if I pronounce that right. And these were the ceramic sculptures that were at DesignerCon. And the special cool thing about these is they run Circuit Python embedded inside. Inside, and uh, Brian, who works on this, said that um, he could have used other things, but the iteration and the ability to work fast and get these in prototype format and actually get it to work is uh, what made him choose Circuit Python. So I think. This is one of those good examples of um, why we made CircuitPython. We wanted to make it for everyone. Um, if you're an artist and you want to make something glow and something move, um, you shouldn't have to spend forever on it. You should be able to build something that you want to build, and Python is a very approachable language for lots of people, particularly artists. We also looked at other types of art. So there's a generative art project on GitHub that we link to, Ooh. and it's uh, just made of Python. So this is like a Python processy type thing. Uh, Dave did a servo tester. And yeah. actually, Dave uh, didn't make it to show and tell, but I know he's working on this because I just looked at it on Instagram. He got Flappy Bird working on Trellis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool. Uh, so, but uh, this, is a, this is a really handy thing. I mean, we, this is a project. He actually came up with this because he's been doing a lot of robotic stuff. And, you know, like every motor is a little bit different. Sometimes you've got like 90 degree range, sometimes 180. Metal gear is different than plastic, micro, or continuous rotation. So this is a little um, circuit Python controlled servo tester that will actually, you know, set the angle and tell you, like, as you turn it, it will set it so you can tell exactly where it stops. So perfect for specifying out your motors, like figuring out what is the exact pulse width for each one. And, uh, you know, so it's good to, like, just test and see the physical range. Okay. Very handy. This is from Cedar Grove. This is a final prototype of circuit Python based testers used to fix and repurpose analog meters. Yeah, look, he's got a custom feather wing yeah. as well. All right. Next Maybe. up. Um, you know, we keep an eye on all things Python on hardware. This is the Sippy Max a Risk uh, Five Sixty Four AI module. It's on Indiegogo. Yeah, um, it looks like there is a MicroPython port for it. We're going to be watching this. Yeah, it's a six hundred megahertz processor, and it's it looks like they're, the MicroPython is basically one of the ways that they're suggesting people program it, which is which is neat because like historically, you know, these boards would come with like embedded Linux, but they're actually like now, you know, if you're going to go with an embedded like real time type operating system, maybe just go straight to Circuit Python and then. Yeah. Use that as your operating system. And then uh, Kenna posted up, this is a Pixel 32. It's MicroPython on your Pixel kit in the browser. And yep. uh, we linked over to GitHub this and the, the video. This is the web REPL, I think, for the ESP32. Yep. And they just adapted it to be optimized for um, the Kenna board. So again, a, a, another example of a, a product that has an embedded um, you know, a REPL with embedded MicroPython, embedded CircuitPython, so you can program it directly without needing an IDE or compiler. And uh, as we prepare for AdaBox 10, we're talking about light and sound and more. We have a lot of articles from Tron to the Magic Kingdom, things that inspired us to do light and sound with Python. We also pointed to some of the guides we have and more. Um, updated guide, this is our little OWL project. Yep, Mikey Sklar has updated this uh, from Arduino to now it works on CircuitPython. And um, this is a Mike Barella original project. We still have the little kit for it, but now you can use a Gemma M0. And then we had some made with Moo. Uh, ben posted up some fantastic slides and code on GitHub on um, Pygame Zero, which is a really easy way to use Moo, our favorite editor, to make games. And in case you're wondering what Moo is, it makes it easy as possible to get started with programming, but aims to help you graduate to real development tools later. One of the cool things I like about it is you're typing code. It's not a block editor. There's things like make code for that, but this one is you're learning Python as you're going along. But it does stuff like, you know, oh, hey, you know, I think you didn't put enough spaces here, yeah. or like this is a, you mistyped something. So it does help you along. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, and, and as one of the uh, creators of it, uh, Nicholas said, it's uh, like the toddling stage in learning to walk. You're finding your feet, and once you're confident, you should be able to move on and explore. Um, speaking of Python, looks like, and we posted up uh, this on Twitter and more, that um, Python's going to be the official programming language in France. So, hmm. uh, th th when, like they, when, also? Yeah, when they're teaching programming, it's going to be Python. Okay. So that's a big deal. Um, and we're seeing and hearing about more of this. It's one of the most popular programming languages in the world. And then I think you'll see more curriculums go for it. And then um, this one, this made the rounds. This is an interesting thing. Um, this is from Andreas. 
And uh, this was an interesting video. It uh, was, uh, I'll just read the description. Python seems to be the fastest growing programming language. It is widely used to program Raspberry Pis. It's on the verge of becoming available on our small microcontrollers. Has it come time to leave the IDE, the Arduino IDE, and go on? And, uh, you know, popular video, lots of people had comments. But the cool thing is, it's now it's now a conversation. People are, it's not even like use Arduino or it's never, it's never like, oh, there's a replacement, like never use Arduino. Yes, there's always going to be times you want to use yeah. Arduino. But he did a really good job. Uh, I think he did a good job video. comparing when you want to use either one. Yeah. There are time situations, like for example, this artist who's like, I need fast iteration. I don't need ultra high speed. I just actually want usability. I want um, safety in code. I want the code not to, you know, crash or like, you know, we, we just wrote a, a little article for a magazine that's going to come out. And you never have to worry about like, oh, if you divide by zero or like read the wrong memory location, which is so easy to do in Arduino that your code will crash and you'll never know what happens. If, if something goes wrong in Python, it will pop you out and say, hey, you know, an exception occurred. Here's where it is. So as you're developing a project, it'll help you catch your bugs. It'll help you um, not make memory access errors or, um, you know, worry about getting like invalid data and then you don't realize that you had invalid data because it, it, it fails somewhere else. There's so much checking that happens in each step because it's a, an interpreted language. Um, but yeah, on the smaller microcontrollers, of course, you always want to use Arduino because CircuitPython or MicroPython will fit on them. But, you know, the chips that are coming out now, there's not a lot of new small 8-bit micros. All the new things coming out now are Cortex M3s, M4s, Suddenly, like the M7s are coming out, they're becoming more popular. Um, that speed is 600 megahertz. If you have 600 megahertz and such a complicated peripheral chain, you can't just to toggle a register anymore. It doesn't work that way. There is no like, ooh, I toggle a register and now the pin goes high. No, no, no. You can't do that no more once you get into these, these yeah. processors. There's so many steps you have to like synchronize the clocks and you have to take control of the bus and you have to like, you know, stop any other multi core stuff happening and then perform your action. If you're going to be doing that, you might as well have something like CircuitPython to help you with this, that abstraction, let you do more um, instead of spending like line by line. You know, one one two letter command in Python, like the in or with command, is equivalent to like 30 or 40 lines of C. So you can just zoom through your code. I think the thing that I've seen is people want to get started really fast and they want to do a lot of iteration and interpret language with something like the REPL with uh, Moo in particular, yeah. and something like CircuitPython, where it shows up as a drive. When you save the file, it restarts. Those are all the things that people, they're like, this is how it should be. Yeah. Very interesting. Anyways, I think a lot of it was covered. Check out the video. Um, it's ne it's never Which one yeah. was good <clears throat> for the task at hand? Okay. Speaking of mega processors. Yeah, we're going to do this in, um, it's not out yet, but um, this is some of the stuff that we show. <sighs> Look at all these Midi, great hardware. Bluefruit NRF. Um, Mega. And then uh, we also have some upcoming events. PyCon will be in 2019, May 1st through 9th. This was our most clicked from the previous week, all graphic widgets in one form. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I keep track of that. And then in our Help Wanted section, um, we went over the, the Pi jobs that, uh, that are there. So if you're looking for a job with the Raspberry Pi Foundation, they have a club program manager and a club growth manager. Um, we're still looking for help for translating the messages at CircuitPython. We have a link to that. We have our awesome CircuitPython list, and all this is in Adafruit Daily that goes out every single Tuesday. Um, is, I think it's the most popular Python and hardware newsletter at I'm the moment. I'm saying it. I'm calling it. It is. And, Number uh, one. That's it. That's the news Number for one. Python Number and hardware one. this week.